Well, forgiveness. Um, if you, if if you know, forgiveness is. A, I, I would call forgiveness a mechanism, and self inquiry of being in the observer. Uh, two mechanisms, like the forgiveness, I would say, is quite a strong theme in the course of miracles, and in um, self inquiry. Uh, or Ramana's work, or in or what I call the observer, or the observer tool on my YouTube channel, you'll find lots of things on that. I mean, they're both, um, so it, de it really, it depends on your evolution and how, what forgiveness means and how you're applying it, and what uh, what observing or witnessing or self-inquiry means and how you're inquiring, because as you evolve, what you are and what comes up for you is totally different. Your perception of the world and what you are and what it, what forgiveness is and what self inquiry is is completely different. For me, um, you know, I mean, uh, forgiveness could have connotations of there's a me who needs to forgive a you, and that the separate me is real and the separate you is real. And I think forgiveness is really great on that level. You know, like uh, this person has attacked me, and God is a love in which I forgive that person for attacking me. So it's the idea that there's a me, or there's an experience of a me, and there's an uh, experience of an attack by an other. And so that would be a heavy energy, heavily in duality. And so uh, that's a great thing to be doing. God is a love in which I forgive this individual for attacking me. God is a love, or I, I pray for a miracle to see this person differently. Instead of this person, I could see peace, or I could see Christ in this person, instead of the, what I see in this person, whatever it is. So those things will dissolve, um, you know, the, the ego attachment to that story, you know, the energy and the, and the thinking around it. And then as that dissolves, you'll see that person differently. And then at a certain point, you won't be able to think of that person. They'll just vanish as a, because there won't be anything to even pick that up as a special thing or event or person. Um, so forgiveness can work. I, I would say in the Course of Miracles, which is very advanced to the level of enlightenment for the solution of the ego. So you have to see, like, forgive, forgive the body, forgive myself for identifying with the body. Uh, forgive myself for believing that there are others, forgive myself for believing I'm a separate self, uh, uh, forgive myself for, uh, you know, uh, for picking up identification in this world. So you, whatever you are, you just forgive it away until it disappears. So if you forgive until there's nothing there. So you forgive until it's out, until there's nothing to forgive, because you won't keep forgiving a person after they vanish. That's right. You won't forgive. You want to forgive the world when the world, there's no longer a you in relationship to the world is out there. That will also vanish. So the forgiveness, you just have to see where you are with it. If if life is very personal, there's a me and a you and others and all kinds of horrible things happening. Then, that's where your forgiveness will lie. Or if your forgiveness is more in the individual self, it could be forgiving my critical thoughts, forgiving myself for attacking myself, uh, uh, forgiving um, my painful knee or my blocked nose or whatever it is, until that dissolves and that's a nothing. So when, when it's a nothing or the, we get to the holy instant, there is nothing to forgive because there's nothing there. There's no you or that thing that there's a relationship with or a personal relationship with. So that has dissolved. So that could be used as a practice to enlightenment, just on its own. You could say, I'm going to forgive until there's full realization of the truth. Uh, so that would work. Uh, or you could do self-inquiry. That's more a kind of what I call a mystical practice, uh, self-inquiry. So you, that can be used fully to enlightenment. Uh, enlightenment means, I mean, it sounds glamorous, but enlightenment means you've come, you've come to the end of duality. So, um, okay, there's a story that I am me, my thinking, let's say, and my body and the feelings in it, and that's, that's me. You often called the ego mind or the body ego mind. Um, so, so am I this body or is there, an, a, is there something here that is not the body, which is watching the body? Is the body, is the awareness of the body something that comes and goes? And then is it possible to let go of even the need to identify with body until it disappears? And then is there the realization that one was never the body and now it's not there any longer? So one can self inquire with the body or do the observer on the body. What about the thoughts? Ah, even the body has disappeared, but these are my thoughts. I'm thinking these thoughts. This is me. I mean, these thoughts uh, is me. I mean, I love being me and being my thoughts 
and being entertained by the drama of my thinking. Well, but let's self-inquire. Is there a witnesser? Is there a deeper field of observing, which is not this entertainment field of thoughts passing by? Oh, there, there does seem to be something inner, which is, not, which is not a thinker or a thought. Okay, well, let's be with that and not get entertained by the thoughts. And let's go deeper and deeper into that uh, over the weeks and months until and let the thoughts start to disappear as if they're meaningless and they're not important at all. And then there's a realization that there is something here which is not the thoughts and that that's always here and the thoughts are more like entertainment that one doesn't need to get hooked into. And so one is no longer the thoughts. Uh, so that can happen. What about the feelings? You're starting to practice up and fear arises or shame or guilt. Okay, uh, it's not the body, it's just a generalized uh, guilt feeling, or it's not a thing. But again, is this guilt wasn't here five minutes ago, and now it's ar arisen? Is there something here which is not the feeling of guilt that has just arisen? Is there a deeper witnesser that sees guilt emerge and then sees it pass away, but is not the guilt, or the fear, or the pain, or, or anything in this world that comes and goes? or is transitory, or is changing, something that is unchanging, and is there's a deeper place, a deeper witnesser, there is this inquiry to yourself, which is beyond a feeling, a thought, a body, perception, uh, a me or a world. Oh, yes, there is. Well, let's just keep um, uh, being with this. And then one realizes one is not a passing transitory feeling that arises. One can just witness it, but one is not affected by that. So eventually there are all these things like being a personal thinker or be, being a limited thinker that has individual thoughts or an individual with a body or an individual that suffers pains and aches and afflictions starts to dissipate. And there is, um, now the Course in Miracles calls it I like this thing, you know, it has beautiful words, the hush of heaven. It's like no sound can intrude on such a holy grace and peace, which is so powerful, all present, that not even the thoughts seem to be able to disturb it, not even the body, not even any kind of feeling, not even the world. It's more like the world is hushed out. So um, I, th I thought that was beautiful, and I know what it's talking about. Um, so uh, forgiveness and self-inquiry. So yes, both can be used. Of course, it did, you know, um, uh, to get to the end. Uh, I'll stop on that.